Hello again and welcome to the second part of this video entitled Learners with Special Needs. Previously, we talked about learners or the specific learning difficulties and their signs and symptoms. So today, we will talk about the ways on how we can help the learners with special needs. So in this lecture, you will be able to recall the different specific learning difficulties and we are also going to suggest ways on how we can help these learners with special needs. Also, we are going to recommend activities suitable for these learners. Are you ready? Let's start. Let's recall the different specific learning difficulties. Do you still remember them? Okay, we have here dyslexia, dyspraxia, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder or ADHD and we also have Autism or Autism Spectrum Disorder. Okay, let's start with dyslexia. Do you recall what it means by dyslexia? Mm-hmm. So dyslexia is a common learning difficulty with reading, writing, and spelling. Right. So the question here is, how can we help children with dyslexia? Parents and teachers can help the child by doing the following. First, what can you see in the picture? Mm -hmm. So we can see in the picture that the child is reading, I mean the mother, sorry, the mother is reading to the child. So we have to read to our children or to our child. Why? Because this will improve their vocabulary and of course their listening skills. Not only that, it will also encourage their interest in books. So the more we read to them, the more they become motivated and become more engaged in reading books. Okay, another thing is share reading, right? So both of the parent and the student or the child should read together. So they have to read some of the books and then of course discuss what is happening or what might happen in the story. So the more the student or the learner, the child, response to those questions, the more they can boost their, how can I say, um, motivation or in interest in reading books. So this will encourage the child to read more and enjoy reading. Okay, we do not just read to our child and not only do share reading, but we have to do Overlearning. What is overlearning? Overlearning means reading repeatedly. Okay, so read your child's favorite book over and over until they get tired of it or until they are done with it. Okay, why do we need to do reading over and over? Because repetition will reinforce or reinforce, I should say, their understanding and this means they will become more familiar with the text. So it is easier for them to recognize the letters or even the words that they are reading. Okay, another thing that we could do is to make reading fun. Right. I know reading is sometimes perhaps boring to you, but when we are doing this with children, we have to make sure that we have to make reading fun. Reading should be a pleasure, not a chores. So you can use books about subjects your child is interested in and make sure that reading takes place in 
a relaxed and comfortable environment. Okay, so with this, um, they would be able to uh, tell th themselves that, okay, I am enjoying reading. And of course, we do not just um, read to them or do share reading, but it is important that we have to give them time to read alone or do the silent reading. Yes, children also need the chance to be alone to encourage their independence and fluency in reading. So after we do the reading time together, you can let them read on their own also. Okay, so what kind of activities then can we prepare for learners with dyslexia? What do you think? Have you taken down notes or do you have any recommendations about the activities? If you do have, just write it down on your notes, okay? So, um, here are some common activities that are helpful to develop reading, writing, and spelling among dyslexic learners. We have here, yes, the letter blend bingo. So, I know bingo is very common and very typical game that we play when we were younger, right? So, using bingo charts and flashcards with words that use specific consonant blends, the teacher reads a word or show a picture representing the word to their student. Students then place a mark on the bingo square with matching consonant blend. This process is repeated until the students have much, uh, sorry, matched up enough consonant blends to make a bingo. All right. Now, this activity, this bingo activity, helps dyslexic students learn and remember letters and even the letter combination sounds by pairing repetition with auditory and visual aids. All right, so this is the letter blend bingo. Another activity that we could see here is the spelling station. Right, have you heard about this or have you played this kind of game before? Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no, okay. Well, dyslexic students struggle with perceiving the sequence of the letters, remember? So, they actually often mentally rearrange these letters within words. Now, to help students who encounter spelling challenges due to dyslexia, you can create a variety of stations based on the materials and resources that you have in your school or in your classroom. So here are some few ideas to get you started. Let's have number one. We have here the letter magnets. Mm. So students have to spell words with magnetic letters on a metal surface. Yep. I remember that this kind of um, activity is very fun because I did this when I was in elementary. I think when I was in first grade, yeah. Our teacher gave us the chance to spell words in front using letter magnets, like for example, spell the word cat, dogs, even apples or grapes, those kinds of words. and it is actually easier for us, especially for me, it's easier for me to remember these kinds of words. All right, another activity that we could see here is the puzzle time. Mm, this is also um, one of the most fun activity that we could use. This station is made up of 
spelling worksheets, like for example, crossword puzzles and even word search or word hunt. This helps to facilitate word recognition. So with this kind of activity, the student or the learner with dyslexia will be able to recognize the words right away, okay? Or it's easier for them to um, recognize the words. Okay, not only letter magnets or even puzzle time, we can also have here colorful words. Students write out assigned spelling words using different colors for each letter to create associations between colors and letters, facilitating the retention of correct letter sequencing. So that is how useful this colorful word activity is. Okay, lastly, that we could use or that we could incorporate is word art. Yes, we have here word art and word art uses crayons, markers, glitters, and other art materials so that, stu uh, what's that? students can spell out and even decorate the words on construction papers, associating the spelling of the word with artistic expression. So we cannot just, you know, we cannot just let them spell words, but we can actually make it more fun for them. And the more fun the activity, the more they can remember something. Okay? So these are sample activities that we could use or that we could incorporate in our classes. Have you thought about one or have you thought of other examples? Very good. Okay, so let's then move on. If we have already suggested some activities for dyslexic learners, how about for dyspraxia? What is dyspraxia again? Okay, we learned in our previous video that dyspraxia is a brain-based condition that makes it difficult for the child to coordinate physical movements, control speech, and learn in a traditional classroom environment. So, how can we help children with dyspraxia? We can help them by, first, paying attention to writing utensils and paper. So we have to make sure that they are using or they are handling, okay, these utensils properly. Another thing, we have to consider alternatives to activities requiring handwriting. And of course, when they are doing something, we have to give them plenty of extra time so that they won't get clumsy or they won't fuzz up, okay? Or they don't become, how can I say? They, so that they would be able to do their task properly. Okay, another thing that we could see here is we have to emphasize directions in step-by-step -step form. Not only that, we can help them with their task that requires fine motor skills. All right, so here are some examples. Here are some examples that we can use for learners with dyspraxia. Let's get started. First one is this, imaginative play. Have you ever done this before? Or have you noticed this kind of activities done by teachers before or even now? Mm -hmm. So you can actually make use of your outdoor performance stages or stage because this allows the children to benefit from the fresh air and of course the open space. Give the child um, specific instructions like for example, uh, let's jump like a kangaroo or perhaps let's jump like a bunny. 
These kinds of instructions are very simple, and yet they are easily to follow and understand, right? Now, the more these tasks are practiced, and the more the muscles are engaged and challenged, it is actually better for them to um, build balance and coordination. And of course, the over muscle strength will improve over a period of time. Okay, so another thing that we could use, another activity that we could also use is this. I know you play this one in your country too, right? In Korea, I saw, but I forgot how you call this game. Okay, so anyway, it's called hopscotch. Okay, in English, it is actually possibly one of the most easily accessible playground games. And this is a cost-effective and simple to create place. And of course, it also plays a great role and very beneficial in building our gross motor skills. Ah, our children's gross motor skills. Okay. Um, one trick is that you could use bright colors and you can even design this hopscotch just to appeal to the visual strengths in children with dyslexia. So initially you could make game easier by asking the child to alternate between using one foot and two feet firmly on the ground. I'm pretty sure if you do this kind of game, it will be fun and students will learn how to balance or how to coordinate with their legs or even their feet. Okay. So these are just examples of activities that we could do with um, students with dyspraxia. Another specific learning disability that we've learned before is ADHD, right? Do you remember what ADHD stands for? Hmm, okay. ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. You're right. And this is a mental health disorder that can cause above normal level of hyperactivity and impulsive behaviors. People with ADHD may also have trouble focusing their attention on a single task or sitting still for a long time. So can you recommend some ways on how we can actually help these kinds of learners? Have you ever encountered one? What kind of activities did the teacher do? Or how did the teacher help these children? So let's begin. Here are some ways on how we can help ADHD learners. First, we can or we have to create a structure. Make a routine for your child and stick to it every day. Simple daily tasks such as having your child lay out his or her clothes for the next day can provide essential structure. Another thing, break tasks into manageable pieces. So try using a large wall calendar to help remind the child of their duties, okay? Color codings especially color coding choices, chores and homework can keep your child from becoming overwhelmed with everyday tasks and even school assignments. So even morning routines should be broken down into discrete tasks. Okay? All right. Last, uh, no, thirdly, sorry, we have to make sure that we limit distractions. Yes, children with ADHD become easily accessible to, how can I say, 
distractions. Like for example, television, cell phones, video games, and even computer encourage impulsive impulse behavior and they should be regulated as soon as possible. Okay, so by decreasing time with electronics and increasing time doing engaging activities outside the home will help your students, uh, how can I say, have an outlet for build up energy. Okay, so again, we have to create our structure. We have to create structure. We also need to lessen our lessen the distraction or limit the distraction. And of course, um, break the task into manageable pieces. Okay. Fourth, all right, is encourage exercise. Physical activities burns excess energy in healthy ways. So it also helps a child focus uh, their attention on specific movements. And this will or may decrease impulsivity. So try to do some exercise, even short exercise will do. Okay. Another thing that we could do is encourage out loud thinking. This is very important because children with ADHD can lack self-control. This causes them to speak and act before thinking. So ask your child to verbalize their thoughts and reasoning when the urge of act out arises. Okay. It's important to understand your child's thought process in order to help him or her curb impulse behavior. So just encourage out loud thinking. Lastly, believe in your child. Your child likely doesn't understand or realize the stress that their condition can cause. So it's important to remain positive and encouraging, okay? Your child will, may struggle with ADHD now, but it won't last forever. So just try to praise your child's good behavior so that they know when something was done right or they would actually know if it's not good, okay? Now, what activities can we provide for ADHD learners? Any recommendations? Okay, please take note of this example. Number one is music. Yes, so learning to play an instrument like drums or recorder, even piano and other instruments can help to build confidence and improve the focus and reduce stress of the child, okay? Some research even suggests that music can uh, decrease impulsiveness and it may even improve your, their mathematical ability so they actually incorporate music in classes. And you can do that too. Okay, moving on. Another activity here is drama. So I know you've done this when you were even younger or perhaps even this time, okay? So acting and role play will give your child the chance to put themselves in someone else's shoes. Learning lines and preparing to go on stage will teach them self-discipline as they leave their inhibitions behind and get into character. So drama is a good activity for helping children to develop their social skills and even improve concentration, comprehension, and co their condition, or even confidence, I should say. Okay. So that's the second one. 
Last one is the board game. Yes, so this kind of activity is ideal for shorter attention spans and it can actually also help an impulsive child to learn to take turns. So if your child enjoys this activity, you should introduce games that require longer attention span process, okay, ah, spans and uh, some strategies for them to think, okay, so that they could enhance their concentration, their cognitive processing, okay, and even problem solving skills. So these are just simple activities that we could incorporate. Lastly, um, that we are going to talk about is the Autism Spectrum Disorder or ASD. So do you remember what it means by ASD or autism? Okay, autism is a condition characterized by challenges with skills, repetitive behaviors, speech and nonverbal communications, as well as by unique strands of differences. So, question, how can we help these autistic children? Of course, we can do it by making time for fun. Mm. Yeah, it's very important to schedule playtime when the child is more, most alert and very awake, okay? Have fun together by thinking about the things that make the child smile, laugh, and come out of his or her shell, okay? Another thing that we have to make sure is to pay attention to the child's sensory sensi uh, sensitivity. We've learned before that many children with ASD are hypersensitive, especially with light, sound, touch, taste and smell so we have to check on these kinds of things and we have to consider these kinds of um how can i say uh, sense, uh sensory sensitivity okay and of course lastly that we could do is to reward good behavior all right so for example we could actually praise them when they act appropriately and or when they learn a new skill and if they did a bad thing of course we should do something about it right away okay now here are just some examples of things or activities that we could incorporate in our classes if we are handling autistic children number one is make a sensory bottle as you can see in the picture, it's very creative and very appealing, right? Okay, so you can fill an old plastic bottle with a mixed water, even glitter, uh, probably a few drops of food coloring to create an eye-catching toy for your child. So this activity is a really simple way to help your kid learn to engage and stay focused. Okay, another activity is thread edible jewelry. This activity is very fun because students will love to work on their um, accessory. It's not just a simple accessory, but it's quite edible as well. So you can use candy laces to create pretty necklaces and bracelets. Encourage your kid to hone their motor skills by threading on some cereals with hole, of course, in the middle and then using colorful candies too. Okay, once they finished, not the ends of this tie, okay, or the laces, and your kid will, of course, absolutely be delighted with their fashionable and tasty creation. So they, they did not just have fun, but actually they, how can I say, they are also going to enjoy eating their creation. Okay. 
Moving on, smelling game. The, um, we've learned before that they have sensitivity over smelling something, right? So this is one good activity that we could provide to our learners. Fill a selection of small containers, like for example, let's say a painted, uh, what's that? Painted jam jars. That's actually okay. And with a mix of fragrant ingredients like lavender, coffee, or soap, and then place them over the top using a piece of fabric and rubber band. And then ask your child to identify the different smell. So children with autism love to learn about their senses, okay? and the roles they play in exploring their environment. All right, so these are simple activities, and if you have more recommendations, just write it down. Okay, now let's conclude our lesson. All learners have different needs. They may have dyslexia, dyspraxia, ADHD, or autism. However, as a teacher, we should be knowledgeable and always be prepared to, on how to manage our children, okay? Even how to handle them. So these are the learning, uh, learners with special needs, specifically how we could actually handle these kinds of children and um, activities that we could incorporate in the classes. So I do hope you've learned a lot from this lesson. Thank you so much for listening and goodbye.